Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at Asobo Studio's newly released Junkers JU52. So it is from the developer of Flight Sim and it costs $15. And of course we would have liked it to have been free for us, especially those of us who paid for the premium version or whatever deluxe version. But okay, $15, we'll have to decide whether it is worth it or not. So I'm going to test it out for you and see if you like it. Uh, it is a plane with a mixed history. It started out in 1930 and I think was first sold in 1932 and then eventually it was taken over by the Luftwaffe and converted to military uses during World War II. And then after World War II it was used by lots of people. The Swiss Air Force, the French, the Spanish, the British, everybody used these things. Um, I'm not sure about the choice of setting the date 1939. They probably didn't have to specify a date. <laughs> um, uh, this has uh, numerous liveries. I think I'll go with this one. And yeah, there's no suspicious liveries or anything like that. Uh, so that's all fine. But figure maybe maybe before it got converted to military uses or one of the original ones, if they wanted to pick a date, maybe 1932-ish or after the war. I think there's a retrofit version here which is uh, post-war or actually it has uh, English gauges, it has manifold pressure, it says stuff like that. These others have German gauges and so they, they're the original instrumentation and this retrofit one is modern instrumentation. So that might be a post-war one and this one would be pre-war one. I guess maybe they thought 1939 would specify pre-war enough, but eh, uh, might have wanted to knock a few years off of that. But anyway, it is fine. The liveries are happy little liveries. Actually, the one, the re uh, retrofit one has uh, the Aviators Club livery and Xbox Aviators. Uh, so it's basically uh, not got some of the other liveries that the other ones have float one. It's got this really yellow livery. So each one has different a different set of liveries. And we've got a ski one like this. So, but I'll just go with standard. And just the default one here. And I'll carry the default 50% of our fuel and see how well that does on this course. So we're going to start out at Frankfurt and we're going to go along the Rhine, down the Rhine, uh, taking a look at these landmarks. And I've uh, taken off with it once just to make sure I could. And it's not hard. Uh, this is not a uh, normal tail dragger -ish issue kind of situation. It seems fairly easy to take off with and handle. And so we'll take a look at that as we fly. Runway it's very quiet in here and I wonder if I should like turn up the sound or something but you can see the instrumentation here as it is sort of would like a little bit more wear on the actual things or some glassy sort of deal on the dials but anyway that's fine and we can see all sorts of details and of course the wood on the yoke the seats in the retrofit version are more updated looking. These are more traditional looking seats. And that is the cockpit for you. So outside, it is again not very loud and I'll spool up the engines here. A very simple livery for us this time. Bare bones, if you will. I like how the flaps are done. I mean, uh, the flaps of this plane. In general, I like the plane for the fact that it has three engines and it also has the really, really long wing. It's, it's got a good feel to it for that. Okay, brakes off. So this is how it sounds with the engines up. And it does not take a whole long time to get off the runway. That's it. Of course, the gear does not retract, but the flaps do. Can hardly notice, though. 
in the menu it says that the cruise speed is like 90 something knots but it it isn't that bad I think it's more like 130 the huge wing does give a lot of lift once you take off so they trimmed up quite a lot but it does seem to handle fine at that it's not like it gets off the ground violently or anything I do have the Bijan Habashi tree pack, so we've got the fall textures in now, you can tell. I will keep it fairly low for the sightseeing. And in fact, that's exactly what the plane is used for these days. It's still flying. And it is used for sightseeing. Aside from the museum pieces, of course. Some museum pieces are kept flight worthy. But other than the museum flight-worthy pieces, there are the sightseeing ones. And we can see quite a lot of buildings over there in Frankfurt. Uh, Frankfurt is a photogrammetry city. Prior to today, I have not flown around it since the update. So we'll get our look of it. And at many things. Seem to have a lot of points of interest, so I guess they did a lot of work here. Obviously, Frankfurt is very popular. One thing I don't expect from this is that they've got realistic failures or anything like that. Normally, for the more expensive payware planes, you've got a lot of that going on. But this one, not so much, probably. It doesn't necessarily give the feel of a vintage aircraft. It's not flying like a Cessna or anything, but you know, it's fairly easy compared to say something like the DC-6 from PMDG where there's a whole lot more going on. Taking a look at the cockpit, in fact, it's not like we've got a huge panel of flick switches at the top. There's some interesting Controls, mind you, uh, those in particular seem fancy. It is not without its details. But it's not nearly that kind of complexity. Okay, so taking a look at Frankfurt, we've got a interesting building over here. Swing by, is that a stadium? They sure put it away from everything. Yep, that's a stadium alright. And that's an interesting looking building with those colors. Fancy. Got a rail yard to our left. Wish they would at some point introduce moving trains, but that doesn't seem like a priority. Lots of custom buildings here despite the fact that it's a photogrammetry city. Weird little cones on the top of that building. Don't know what that's supposed to be about. So yeah, I mean, it's certainly a good sightseeing plane if we take a look inside. We can tell that this would be a nice plane to fly around in. Take a good look at a city like Frankfurt. No problems inside. The programmetry needs to shape up a little bit. If I cache the city, it would, it would certainly have those already ready to go. I mean, it was a very sturdy plane, so my sort of bias as far as vintage planes goes, uh, as far as how they should feel, might not be quite correct in this case. This probably is more like a DC-3, in which case it's not so finicky as some of the other planes of the era. Uh, I think it was that bridge that I wanted to take a look at. Alright. So, Frankfurt from a bit of a distance. This flight is going to take a little over an hour. It depends on how much meandering I do, though. 
inside view. Just gonna take a look at that tower and then we'll move on down the Rhine. Not quite buzzing the tower fighter jet style, but lots of buzzing going on anyway. Occasionally there's an eccentric looking building. There's one. Who are right there. Alright, onwards. There's some more photogrammetry buildings over to right there, but we'll have to get closer for those textures to get fixed. At certain points the OBS Studios was having trouble keeping up with the sim in terms of rendering, so hopefully the video is not too choppy compared to the flight. But it's possible it's choppier. Okay, so we've got a town here. Actually a bunch of different places. Well, this isn't so much a town as a factory complex. Still photogrammetry covered. This little town that we've just passed is called Diedenbergen. It looks nice. Very compact sort of thing. Okay, we're about to meet up with the Rhine. And our next site is... Oh boy. Nieder Walden? Walden... And it lost me there. <laughs> uh, Nieder Walden... I, I got up to that point. But I don't know what to do with the rest of these letters. I do wonder why the menu for the aircraft selection always seems to underplay the cruise speeds of everything. It does make it a little bit harder to plan when it just doesn't state the honest to goodness cruise speeds. I mean, why not? Why, why do you have to underplay the cruise speeds? Of course, I'm pushing it close to its maximum speeds. I once again wish I had a single key to drop the HUD. Okay, coming up on Niederwalden. I can't really see what the other led. I mean, KMA something, it looks like. And what is it? Surely not a stadium. <laughs> uh, is it this thing down here? That looks interesting. No, it's still up ahead. Oh, I think I see it. Definitely not a stadium. Oh, that's a lofty position. And it's some kind of palace. Oh, no, it's a monument? It's a monument, because it's got a statue on top. Well. Yep. That is an interesting monument. But we'll move on. I'm not going to do multiple flybys with this. We're going to be on to Castle Cats as we overlook, overlook the Rhine here. I think I might see Castle Cats up ahead. Anyway, we're close. We are approaching. Uh, where are you? Castle Cats. Oh, is that it? No. Where? Oh, down there. Oh, that's a tiny little castle. Okay. I didn't realize we'd have to get that low. There is a suspicious tall tower over there. I don't know if it's supposed to be there or not. It certainly wasn't one of the monuments we had marked. Let's go take a look. That seems like a building that might be a little bit... Maybe it's supposed to be a radio mast though. But they turned it into a building instead. Otherwise I don't know why something would be that tall. Yeah, I don't know if this is supposed to be here. You guys can tell me it's got an interesting thing down there though. Maybe it is, but it's a weird thing to have. 
in the middle of nowhere. There's sort of a palace grounds to our right that seems to be lacking the actual central building. Maybe they should have done something with that. Um, there's a boat here. Oh, there's a monument here too. The boat there, it's this monument. Well, another one of those statues. Okay. Statues are tough in flight sims though. Because they're relatively small compared to other things that you could be modeling. And hard for a lot of planes to really appreciate. Next up, uh, Drakenfell's Castle. There's actually two castles right there. Oh, the clouds decided to clear up. And I'll try and keep it low this time. So we don't pull a castle cats again. Okay, coming up on these castles. Drakenfell's, Drakenfell's Castle and whichever other castle there is right next to it. Let's see... There are supposed to be castles around here. Is it supposed to be on top of the hill? Oh, there we go. Okay. That's a nice looking castle. That's more like it. Which one is that? <laughs> Which one of the two is that? Uh, there's another thing there that uh, can't be a generic building. Okay, I'll go around once, just to take a look since I mistook where this was. Let's zoom in here. Drakenberg and Drakenfels. Okay. Boo. It is very nimble. There's a building here, and then... It looks like this is Drakenberg. Drakenfels. Hold on, I'm gonna go full loop here. Don't tell me it's that boring looking one. Oh, maybe it's on top there? Here, let's see. Oh, oh, there it is. Okay, get rid of the map there. Ah, it's a... It's a ruinish thing. Oh, it's got some other stuff here, but yeah, it's a ruin. Alright. So, Drakenfels is the ruin and Drakenberg is, uh... Oh, nice! Worth a loop. After Cologne, we'll be just headed towards Dusseldorf. And that will conclude the flight. So far, I've been flying 57 minutes, it looks like. Something around there. We took a look inside at uh, at Frankfurt, but this hat looks just flying around the countryside. Well, I mean, it's not completely the countryside. We're approaching Cologne there. There's uh, the South Bridge right there. Or is that the South Bridge? I, yeah, I think so. That uh, The engines on the wings sure do look close from this view. That Pillar is like right there. Okay, so South Bridge. And what else do we have here? Great Saint Saint Martin's Church. Oh, there it is. We can see it pretty easily. Along with another bridge that certainly is custom. There's two ch churches right here. It looks like. Uh, yeah, there's that one and that one. I don't know which one is the Great St. Martin's Church. I figured it's the big one. Uh, not sure about that. 
Okay, there was, we were supposed to take a left turn. And then Rhine... Uh, that's definitely a stadium. Stadion right there. Ah, I see it. Rhinergy? Rhine, uh, Rhine Energy or something like that? Rhine Energy Stadium is what it looks like. There's no sound associated with the trim wheel or anything like that. At least when I trim I don't hear anything. Well, there's that stadium. Okay, northward to Dusseldorf. Oh, I think I heard a little bit of a click for the trim. Very minor. Oh, the airport's right there. The Dusseldorf Airport. Uh, there was supposed to be a site around here. Um, the arena's right in front of the airport. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go around. I, uh, we won't fly straight in. Alright. It looks like the arena's right there. I mean, I could fly straight in. Let's see. How quickly can I slow this thing down? <laughs> that is not good. There's the arena. Interesting place to put an arena. Gotta be loud overflies all the time, but I guess that's not a big problem. Well, I don't have to worry about putting the gear down or anything. Oh, uh, I don't need the rest of the flaps. <laughs> it was gonna lift me right off of the runway here. Okay. Okay. I think we can take that taxiway. Can we? Is that too much of a turn? It's too much of a turn. No. Uh. Well, all right. You knew it wasn't going to be perfect. Mm, nope, what a wait. Okay, well, we've arrived at Dusseldorf. I didn't actually manage to kill myself. And yeah, it's a fairly easy plane to fly. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have decided to on an impromptu basis head for the runway like that and uh, sort of magnificent looking compared to these other guys around here if I do say so myself so yes with this flight of the Junkers Ju-52 I guess I mean if you're gonna fly it all over Germany it might be all right Obviously, everything depends on how much flight time you intend on getting out of it. Cockpit doesn't look too bad. It, it looks pretty good overall. I'm going to hit that truck, can't I? Uh, it's pretty nimble on the ground, actually. Oh, ooh, ooh. Takes a little bit of work, though. There's not a lot of room around here. I swear, these little cars and all. All right, I'll just squeeze in here. All right, and with this, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.